But first, a game. Our contestants here will be participating in the classic Name That Tune. Uh, I don't know how well this is going to work. Andrew, the pressure's all on you. I, I don't know how to play these things. I don't know if it's going to be loud enough to hear. This could blow up in a couple of faces. It's spectacular. Ooh. Michael Jackson. Nice. Beat it. So, what, was that half a second? Yeah, that, that was right. good. You guys that was gotta quick. be quicker. All right, all right. Here we go. Old Spice. Old Spice. So, there's, there's our first audio logo. <laughs> Queen, we will rock you. Yes. Not even a musical note in there, just percussion. And you got it. Netflix. Netflix. Yes. I, I Dude, expected, you know, I, I thought I'd be stumping these people. And you guys would Dude, I, 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 I said I'd get up here. You didn't tell me I had to actually like answer <laughs> fucking questions. Be smart, man. Jesus, but not just smart, you gotta be fast too. We have yeah. All right. Roll tide. Microsoft. Intel. Ah, interesting. Right? So that's one of the most famous audio logos in the world. But funny thing about audio logos or creative in general, sometimes we recognize them immediately, but we don't know exactly who they are. We are Geico! <laughs> <laughs> There's an example of one that's unmistakable. You throw the, the name of the brand in there, and uh, there's no there's mistake. Have one more? I might have one more. You are now free to move about the country. Yes. And this is a really cool one. I'm surprised um, you didn't have ba dum bum bump in there. Like, I feel like that whole McDonald's jingle that started with that song years ago, like, now they don't even do the song anymore. Just some dude at the end of the commercial says, ba dum ba bum bum We're going to get to that. <laughs> All right. There you go. See, I'm paying attention. Yes. I like it. All right. So here's our syllabus. Uh, what are we talking about? Why does it work so well? Uh, what components are there for the sign brand besides just the audio logo? Uh, some applications and best practices. And then a customer journey that will uh, take us through uh, one customer's experience with a single brand in a single day. So let's start in the beginning. The really the beginning. While we are inside our mother's belt, sound is the first contact that we have with the outside world. We hear and we even memorize sounds at, at that stage. The important, the most important of those being the sound of our mother's heartbeat. We know that 60 beats per minute means mom is in a calm state. I hope this isn't too traumatic for you to talk about this. I know we spent a lot of time talking about your mother and your journey in therapy, but... Um, <laughs> She was, you heard the sound of her heartbeat as, as a kid, and you learned to recognize her voice um, and even before you're born. So due to that early exposure, we're naturally wired to respond to sound. Um, audio also activates us more quickly than any other stimuli. Why is that? Because evolutionarily speaking, hearing and instinctively reacting to the sound of that predator creeping up behind you, that's a question of life and death. If you didn't hear that sound and instantly react to it, you're out of the gene pool, pal. So, you know, vision, obviously also critical to survival, needless to say, but it engages after hearing, and it's less likely to trigger the memory centers of the brain. Getting back to that predator example, we're hardwired for this instant reaction to sound. Hearing goes straight to the hippocampus. I don't know what a hippocampus is, but Rob is a former brain surgeon. He can explain that to any of you uh, uh, afterwards if you want to know more about that. I can't because I didn't say the comfort in last night. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but what, what does that mean? It, it, it means that we, we don't have to consciously think about sound to interpret, to get some meaning out of it. So by that same token, even my four-year-old, pooped his pants twice yesterday. Even he recognizes that a song in a major key is happy, a song in a minor key is sad, and all 
all instinctively know this stuff from such an early age. Research um, has discovered that, that brands that use music aligned with their identity, 96% more likely to be remembered by the consumer. And we know this, right? That's why we call them earworms. More research out of Stanford, drill down even further, learning that there are particular musical techniques, especially creating a pause that direct attention and trigger memory retention. Um, Ipsos did a study, not intended to be about sonic branding at all, but it covered over 2,000 different TV commercials, and it measured audience responses in terms of how different assets affect brand impact. If that slide were even remotely legible to you, you'd see that down on the bottom, we've got things like package shape. Uh, what else do we have in there? Font, logo. So this stuff, like, these are the things we, we think of as being the most important pieces of a brand, right? Visual logo. That's here. Sonic brand cues, all the way up here. It's the top performing brand asset. Next to it, characters. So think flow from progressive. Celebrities, down here. So somebody like Flo, who, who is aligned specifically with the brand, that's getting you more power, more bang for your buck than even the biggest celebrity endorsement. Um, so old news. Um, the term sonic branding is trending right now. If you uh, if you pay attention to Ad Week or any of the other rags that, that, we, uh, that we love in this industry, um, you'll know that, that sonic branding is a super hot topic right now, but they've been around for a century. So we call them jingles. One of the first was the weakest quartet. That's not them, but uh, millennials are too young to, to know that that's the audience. Um, they would sing their 40 second breakfast jingle live on the radio every day. So we've come a long way since then from an acapella song being sung live, but the principles are the same. Take advantage of the power of sound to move audiences to purchase something. So what is new? The challenge. We have sensory overload now. We have to cut through the clutter. Consumers are drowning in content, specifically drowning in visual content. They have massive fatigue, which is a massive challenge for us marketers. The opportunity is we now have more channels than ever before to reach leads who are often more pre-qualified than ever before. So we've got apps. Podcasts, hyper-targeted streaming radio, virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa, on hold messaging, more ways than ever to reach our audience than, than we've had in history. So let's drill down and talk about what other assets make up a sonic brand besides an audio logo or a mnemonic, as we like to call it, um, except no one can spell mnemonic, so we generally stick with audio logo. So those are usually the stars of the show. There's a few other components I want to talk about as well. Um, oh, all right. I don't know if this slide is going to work, but here's your McDonald's example. Um, let's find out. So we did not write the McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. There's a lot of dispute about who actually did write that, but McDonald's has tapped us a bunch of times to refresh that logo. Um, let's see if we can actually. Yeah. So um, this is an example of how you can refresh a brand's audio logo um, or customize it for, let's say, a seasonal promotion. Or in one of the cases here, this is for a breakfast promotion. Um, so here's, here's some of the ones that we've done for them over the years. So you, you can play around as long as you stick with that core base, base of the uh, of the logo. I know a lot of people have, have uh, different feelings about messing with visual logos. With audio, we have a little bit more leeway. You know, we, we, can, we can play in the sandbox a little bit there. 
Um, the next thing I want to talk about beyond audio logos, let's talk about music, longer form music. So brand anthems, a uh, classic example might be United Airlines using Rhapsody in Blue. Um, but even more often these days, it's a customized, ownable song that, that is truly exclusive to the brand. But that's not the only way you can use longer form music. Um, artist collaborations are something that can be really powerful. Um, Taco Bell brought in Lil Nas X and Doja Cat. Pretty big leap of faith by a, a large brand to align with, you know, a couple of artists that are pretty controversial. You, you got Lil Nas X lap dancing on Satan. If, if you're Chick-fil-A, probably not a good fit, right? <laughs> but for Taco Bell, that's an authentic collaboration that they can have that feels right to their consumers. So, you know, you, you got to be okay with that baggage. But if it's a good fit for the brand, it can be a really powerful well, thing. Chick-fil-A just didn't prove that who was doing the lap dance on Satan's face. Right. <laughs> yeah, the lap dance on Satan's face was not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, right. Um, User-generated content is uh, another way that you can get some, some mileage out of long form music. I mean, you've never seen a more motivated promoter than an independent musical artist. So you can do things like invite your brand's fans who are musicians to cover so, your so brand. You put me on spot on, on, on the MC, right? I feel like I yes, yes. your, your, your show. Yeah, yeah. I want to ask you a question. What initiates turning that soundbite into a brand audio signal in your brain right like is it a moment in time is it about timing it right like what makes it that that perennially becomes your association like i was laughing with a friend recently we went and saw maverick the new top gun movie yeah. right and it opens up with like the old song from the old top gun with like the gong <laughs> right and like right away i was like 15 Trans and i was like right. i was like okay like before the movie even started like they had me in the frame of mind it was like black screen and you just heard that Yes. And that slow start of the music. And my brain was, I was already transported. Totally. Like I was in. Yes. So what caused that? Was that the, the right sound? Was it because I first heard it at the right time with the right association? That's what there. makes it do that? That's, I think it's a combination of both of those things. And I think Netflix is a, the ultimate example of this. So it's not right. Because the Netflix, right? When you hear that sound. Like, yes. Just so what a powerful case study that is. So we we usually end up taking the easy way out with the audio logos. We slap it on the end of a television commercial or something, right? But Netflix, you've gone through the process already of arguing with your significant other about what you're going to watch tonight. You've finally chosen something, so you're excited. And that's when they hit you with the logo. It's after you've chosen what you want to watch before you actually watch it. I don't think that sound would be nearly as exciting if it happened after a show. So a strategic way to think about it would be using the audio as a trigger to kick off an experience versus a closing remark almost. Yeah, I, I think so. Right. And I, I hope more brands will start to do that. And, and I like what you mentioned earlier too, because you mentioned like the volume element, right? Because mm -hmm. so to me, that Netflix sound is a positive uh, association. Yeah. You know, Amazon Prime with their video is the same thing, mm -hmm. but it's like 12 decibels higher than the Netflix one. Yeah. So, when the Amazon one comes down, I'm always like, oh my god, fuck, and yeah. I'm like turning it <laughs> up the TV to then turn it back up again when the show starts. And Netflix is it, it's the right level of sound where it's a good association, it's loud enough that I get it. Yeah. It's not so loud where I'm like, eh. Yeah. So, how much does that play into it? Yeah, I mean, that's a really important thing, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that in just a minute. We're gonna talk about some of the, the technical ways to best implement a, a sonic brand. That's, that's one of the things that I wanna cover. Um, back to long form music, the last thing that I'll, I'll mention here is just, um, is just versioning. And I think, I'm gonna skip this, uh, because I think it'll be more fun if we just, uh, we just talk about some stuff. So yeah, we did a bunch of international versioning for our electronic. Great, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
Um, here's another completely illegible slide from back there. Let's get that to so we can talk more interactively. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about signature voice tap, which is that third component of a Sonic brand that we had in that slide earlier. So um, every brand talks about achieving a distinctive voice, right? Well, in this case, that can be literally. So you've got the Allstate guy. Does anybody know his name? The Allstate guy. The Allstate guy, right? <laughs> but we know him when we hear him, right? Um, I think another great example, is, as, as uh, Lizzie was just talking about, or no, not Lizzie, who was it? Kim? Somebody was talking about Geico. So Geico is maybe the only player in the insurance space that doesn't use a jingle or a, or a, a song, you know, we got like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, we've got Nationwide is on your side, Farmers, all that. So Geico Liberty, doesn't Liberty, use Liberty, like kill me. Huh? Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Right. Yes. Kill me. Yes. Like, so who doesn't use one that's musical? Geico. But they have that brand voice that we all know. A 15 minute call could save you 15%. Exactly. So a, a voice that is, you know, John Krasinski for eSurance, that was like the reference for every voiceover for the last decade. Or, oh, I don't want an announcer. I want to, this guy sounds like, like the guy from The Office. Dennis Hayster, I think is the Allstate guy's name, he's a way more effective voice because you don't have the association of, oh, it's the guy from the office. It's, that's the Allstate guy. So you just think Allstate when you hear him. Um, I'll, I'll spare you playing these because you all know what all these people sound like. The other one is Allison Jang for Pfizer. We, I want to burn through this stuff quick because I, I think it's going to be fun to have a conversation up here with, with these guys and, and with you all. Um, so real quickly, I'll run through just a few best practices um, for uh, for when you're you're trying to to implement a sonic brand. So um, investing in the planning stage, obviously, really critical. Um, think long term. What are your metrics? Um, Option to listen later or a too long, didn't listen version. So, you know, one of our key principles with audio is that it fits more unobtrusively in people's lives than video does, right? So when, you know, to, to ask a potential client to sit down and watch a 25 minute video, like, can you imagine getting your audience to watch a, a piece of branded content for 25 minutes? Like, that's brutal. But a podcast, that you can listen to on your drive home, at your convenience, multitasking while you're doing whatever you're doing on your computer. That's, that's a pretty easy ask and people do it all the time. Um, leverage your existing content. So blog posts, um, eBooks, even product manuals. You know, imagine you're setting up a, a new Wi-Fi router or something and you have an audio guide so you, you don't have to stare at your phone the whole time, zoom in, look at the picture. An audio guide tells you, okay, plug in the LAN cable now to the modem. Um, there's, there's a lot of interesting applications um, that you can use to get extra mileage out of content that you've already created. Um, and consider the full customer journey, which we'll get to in a minute here. Um, best practice is tech edition. Timing is everything. Three is the magic number. So Three seconds is a dividing line. So when something is less than three seconds long, we hear it and we instinctively react to it. If it's more than three seconds, it actually activates a different part of the brain. I'm sure you can tell us which part, um, but it, it changes it from hearing to active listening. And so, so it doesn't mean that, that something bad if it's more than three seconds of audio. It just means you're going to engage with it in a different way and you're going to be a more active participant in it. If a, a song goes on for longer than three seconds, maybe you start to hum along with it, even if it's just in your head. Um, mixing for the right output. So to, to your point, you've got to think about where people and how people are going to listen to this. 
this? Are they listening to it on AirPods or is it going to be in an at most 360 degree surround sound theater? It's, it's a, a critically important thing to, uh, to consider. Um, write it down, transcription. So this is obviously um, an important thing for podcasts and even for video content. Have a transcription. It's super helpful for search engine optimization. It's also helpful for those of us who like to just skip around to get to the interesting part. Um, invest in quality, recording and post. So if you're going to implement any of this stuff without a, a dedicated audio partner, at least splurge on a good microphone and uh, you know it's it's not going to cost that much more to buy yourself a nice USB microphone rather than just a, a good one for your computer things like that. Um, what do we got? Um, don't use a tin can. <laughs> so some less expected applications for branded audio are let's say hardware sounds. So Start in your car, the sound that reminds you to buckle up, the sound that tells you your back passenger door is open, or these days, even the sound of an electric motor itself. So electric motors don't, don't really make much sound, so I, it's a legal requirement that electric vehicles actually generate a sound under a certain miles per hour to alert pedestrians that they're coming. And that there's a lot of science and some art that goes into creating uh, a sound for an electric motor. Uh, other devices think of boot up sound on an external hard drive or a timer on a microwave or a clothes dryer, things like that. Um, oh, I go back to that smart speaker integration. This is obviously a very hot thing. I don't know, is anybody here doing anything with custom Alexa skills yet? No? Okay, so if, if you think that might be something that you want to do down the road, the point I want to make here is to register your invocation word. So that's the, whatever you, your customers will say to Alexa to get her to launch your custom skill. And these fall into that category of like domain names where and, I, and I- By the way, on that front, anybody that's got annoying people tell them like me, you, you can actually go into the Amazon app to your point and train the app and tell it to say things back to your kids. So like your kids in the morning, you can go in and be like, Alexa, it's the weather today, and it'll be like, brush your teeth, change your underwear, because mom and dad said so. <laughs> it's amazing. It will drive your kids batshit crazy. Yeah, there's so <laughs> much. So I highly recommend it to everybody. So much kids fun you can have. Oh, my God. Dude. Yeah. Uh, but do register your invocation work soon. If you think a custom skill is something that you want to do, you know, what he's describing is something that you would train your individual Alexa to do, but want to have something globally where anyone anywhere can launch a custom skill get your invocation name registered now before pirates start snapping up all the good ones and then reselling them to us like they do with domain names um audio in specific industries there's a few interesting case studies here that, that i'll just briefly touch on so most of us are driven crazy by the chaotic sounds of a casino gaming floor right Studies have shown if you mute a machine, income on that machine will drop by over 25% just by turning off the sounds. Healthcare. Um, we're working with some pretty forward thinking medical device manufacturers to change the sounds of alerts on equipment in patient rooms. I mean, you, those, all those sounds, if you've ever tried to spend the night in a hospital, it's impossible. Things are beeping and pinging all the time, and those alarm sounds just send your cortisol levels through the roof. So really, really forward-thinking hospital systems and some really good research is happening right now showing that creating soundscapes, both in the patient rooms as well as in public spaces in the hospitals, lobbies, other areas where people might gather, are tangibly improving patient outcomes by creating a harmonious sonic environment. So let no one say we're not saving lives here. <laughs> um, oh gosh, Axe Body Spray. <sighs> okay, so these guys spent major resources engineering the most pleasing sounding hiss for the 
the sound of the sprayer. So this this can here, it looks like it's you know it's supposed to be uh, a rocket, potentially a sex toy, um, but that is actually a sonic device at the top of there that treats the sound of that sprayer, lowers the perceived frequency of it so that it sounds better. And yes, that is a cryptocurrency scented Axe body spray. We have officially reached peak bro and society. <laughs> All right, so lots of possibilities here, but sonic brand cues comprise on average about 8% of a typical brand's assets. And that's even with the you know big companies that have been doing this for a long time, maybe that skews a little bit higher, but it's a tiny piece of the overall brand picture. And when you think about the cost of developing a visual brand versus the cost of developing a sonic brand, it's a huge missed opportunity here. And I think that's why smaller organizations than the big boys are finally recognizing that. Um, yeah, audio, the hardest working element in show business, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so now, now it's time for our big Lebowski portion of this. Um, those of you who know the film, I really need your help here for the people who, who don't uh, know it. So uh, we're going to follow the dude's uh, one-day audio journey with one brand and all the touch points that they have. So uh, here's our guy. We'll, we'll call him the dude. The dude lives for bowling. Besides Walter and Donnie, nobody knows the dude better than Spotify. Spotify knows all this pretty damn well. Uh, based on the dude's listening habits, he served an ad on Spotify for a new bowling ball. Well, the dude is not, in fact, a rich millionaire. He does decide to head down to the store and buy the ball that he heard about on that ad. Uh, once he is in the store, the dude walks in the door. He hears a, a, a sonic branding element, audio logo, as he opens that door. There's a, a real-world application there for, for a door chime. He buys that fancy new ball that he heard about on the ad, and he is serenaded by some thoughtfully create, curated neoclassical music. So that's, that's a style of music that's been proven to inspire people to spend more money. It's also important to that willingness to pay metric that our, our strategists are always talking about. So it inspires him to splurge an extra couple hundred bucks on a luxury bowling ball bag, their least modestly priced receptacle. So he heads out of the store, he's on his drive home, and he listens to the getting to know your new bowling ball audio guide that came with the ball. I don't know, it's a complicated bowling ball, okay? There's some instructions involved. So he listens to that, and at the end of that guy, he finds out that the brand also has a weekly podcast all about bowling. He subscribes to that and shares it with his friends. Thanks to the podcast, he also learns about the brand's app. The app provides all kinds of audio content, including competitive leaderboards and audio messaging, which inspires him to share it with friends and rivals alike. This image is in no way relevant, but I think I would have been remiss if I didn't include this somewhere here. So the rug that ties the whole room together is the audio logo. The dude heard it on the Spotify ad, he heard it again in the store, he heard it again on the instructional guide, the podcast, and within the app. The Sonic logo features the sound of a perfect bowling strike, which getting back to that Southwest Airlines example, what a dirty trick that is. And I, I think Southwest's audio logo is one of the most brilliant because not only do we all recognize it, but when we hear that seatbelt chime, it doesn't matter whether we're on United, Delta, or Southwest. We all think you are now free to move about the country. So it's a, it's a nice little trick here that, that our fictional bowling ball company uh, also integrated by, uh, by putting in the sound strikes and now every time the dude hears a strike he thinks of that bowling ball company. All right, so I'm I, I want to end this piece of it now. Here's my contact info. Um, if anybody wants to uh, ask any questions that you're too embarrassed to ask in our QA portion or if you just want to send me intimate photographs, whatever that's that's how you get at me. So um, I want to leave it here, open it up for just a, a 
discussion and to answer any questions that I can about sound and advertising. I have a question. So what happens when the sound triggers less than positive emotions? I'm thinking like you're home for the holidays, yeah, Uncle Tom's back home with his wire, Harper, <laughs> my excuses of it, and your uncle was watching TV, and all of a sudden there are all these cats and dogs in cages, and you hear the opening bars of Sarah Fox's Cards of the Evening. And we basically put that in the show that came out. I had never <laughs> Every time I hear that song, I move the finger animal abuse. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever been prompted to actually give money to the AMPCA. Yeah. So, like, if you were the AMPCA marketer, what the hell? Yeah, or if you're Sarah McLaughlin, what the hell? She's already said she hates me. Has she? She has. She has said, like, I feel bad that I never did that. Yeah. She's still catching the check. <laughs> <laughs> All that sweet, sweet spay and neuter money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's such an interesting thing because it, it really can, it, it's it's an emotional thing, right? Like sound effects are so powerfully that it can be just as visceral in a negative way. And I, I think, you know, brands need to be really cautious about that. And that's, yeah, I don't know if that's a cautionary tale or, or what, but I'm totally with you. I, I'm so stumped that you talked about Axe body spray as a sex toy. Like, <laughs> I'm not even sure how the, the, those two go together, but I guess that's why every time I try and use it, I chip my teeth. That's <laughs> like, it wrong. I, yeah, you may want I, I, They should probably put out an audio guide. They, they should have how to it's an audio guide. Yeah. yeah. Not because the spray use. is all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, external use only. <laughs> Noted that they're going forward. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know we were in California and we're in the office of the Again, I'm from Texas, so I should say that. Um, one of the interesting trends right now on TikTok is, uh, I don't know, Gen Z, or Z, sorry, uh, discovered NPR. And, uh, <laughs> and it made this in the nicest way. They discovered NPR, that they, they support the NPR uh, radio station. And there's this, this trend where they are trying to replicate the sign offs. For Ari Shapiro and Lakshmi Singh, oh, and, and it's getting you know millions of views and all kinds of different. I don't want to be smug about it. You know, actually, Lakshmi Singh is. But, you know, what you do if you accidentally have a brand there, have an audio brand that you never even realized, right? Because if you listen to talk radio or if you listen to yeah. national public radio, you know, I'm sure most people in NPR, you know, like the 93 year old person sitting there, like sending postcards <laughs> asking for money. What do you do when you accidentally have a, a sonic brand? How would you yeah. leverage that to maximize that opportunity? Right? I, I feel like that's a question for the, the Gen Z people. I wouldn't know what the hell to do with that, but surely Susan Stanberg should have some tribute TikTok page or something, right? Like that that seems I, I I personally I'm waiting for TikTok to be outlawed and I'm just hoping that it'll go away before I have actually engage with it in any way but yeah i mean that does to me smell like the kind of thing that that the, this generation of kids could really have some fun with right and i think there are so many examples of that where a sound does unintentionally become associated with a brand and there's a huge opportunity there right that's that's a really interesting one i, did, I didn't realize the kids discovered npr but i guess that's good news right? <laughs> I used to do a lot of work in hospitality, travel and tourism, and like really place making has become a hot thing where big people that are doing scent branding in boutique hotels. Yeah. So if you have like a brick and mortar storefront, if you're an agency working for a brick and mortar storefront, and you're starting to think about like what is the in the building or in venue song experience, where would you start with that? And why would you not say the girl can keep putting that on the feet in your front of Yeah. Class? Okay, so where I would start. This is fresh in my mind for no apparent reason, but I was in the bathroom here this morning. It's very, very quiet in there. And if you've ever been in a men's room in the morning, a public bathroom, 
quiet is not the vibe you want. Like <laughs> that's probably where I would start most urgently. If you have a bathroom with five stalls for men to do their business in, don't make it a silent place where you have to listen to everything that's going on in the next stall. That seems like the most emergency measure that I would take. <laughs> but beyond that, there's a lot of applications. The door chime when you walk in the door, and then the, the music that, that you hear when you're in the store. Um, we work a lot with Starbucks, and that's one of the things that they have tried to do with mixed results, um, aligning with artists and creating uh, album projects and compilations of, of music with some independent artists, some bigger artists, but that's, that's another great opportunity to do that. Um, you know, if you're gonna have music playing in any sort of public space, you have to pay royalties on that music anyway. So you might as well take that opportunity to create something in addition to playing popular music or maybe it's neoclassical music if you're trying to inspire people to spend more money. Maybe it's trip hop or some sort of you know European uh, trance music if you're trying to create more of a hip environment. There are a lot of ways that you can influence the people who are in your brick and mortar through music and, and other sonic treatments and you know the hospital example i think is, is probably the, a, a really powerful one but um, yeah you can also just get people to spend more dough too you got to remember in this business that it is uh it's not just about creating the most buzz or winning awards and con like we're advertisers we're here to move product and it's a it's a powerful way to do that. Anybody else got any questions? Yeah. Okay. All right. So this this is my hater here. So check, this is check, this is check those this. speakers. I'm stuck on stage, so I can't throw the speakers at anybody. <laughs> Come on, throw that shit around. There we go. She hates. Wow. Nice hands. Damn. That's a catch of the day right there. Okay. So first right. off, this needs to set the record straight. I said the ones that stick with me were the annoying ones, which I hate. All right. Okay. All right, so a uh, quick question for you. How long does it usually take to associate a sound with a brand? Like, how long would it take for a brand who created a, a sonic logo, you know, get that out there in their market? Yeah, repetition is really key, you know, and, and that was, besides the fact that I just, any excuse for a Big Lebowski reference, I'll take, but that, that's kind of the purpose of that. You know, you really do have to hit them with repetition. And when you do, run the risk of people feeling like you do, and frankly, like most of us do, about a, a lot of these super, super catchy things that get stuck in our head and refuse to leave. Um, but yeah, I, I think repetition is the key. So the more touch points that you can have, the quicker you can reinforce that. You know, if, you know, Netflix, now they're getting back to them, every time you watch an episode, boom, here it comes. Um, great for long form content. You wouldn't want to hear that logo before every, you know, chunks of smaller content. Um, but I think if you can spread out your spend across different channels, you can get that repetition up, up more quickly. But it, it is definitely all about the numbers and just hammering it home. Something that's super, super catchy, maybe it gets sticky more quickly than something that's that's less catchy. So, you know, I, I think that's probably uh, a lot of the, the strategy behind some audio logos that we find super annoying. It's like, okay, what's the stickiest thing? Maybe sometimes we forget that maybe stickiness isn't the most important thing. There are other attributes that, that are really important. You don't want something to, to carry that negative connotation. So. Well, do you find that, you know, there are certain sounds or, combinations of sounds that, that people find pleasing versus annoying and and is that is part of the development of of the logo yeah it is um and we ran into this um working on a truck brand that will remain nameless um research has shown that musical attributes that are aggressive or tough sounding tend to actually have a negative impact on the 
the associations that have that brand. That's a challenge when you're when you're trying to sell a pickup truck. Tough sounding, authoritative, aggressive. Those are all things that pickup truck marketers think of as desirable qualities, but it doesn't translate well to audio. So it, it can actually be much less effective. Um, so you know, again, it, it comes down to authenticity for the brand, but also knowing what musical characteristics are actually going. Awesome. Last question. Have you ever heard of the BC Clark anniversary sale jingle? <laughs> it's regional. It's regional to Oklahoma, actually, but it's been around since 1892. Wow. Right. And it comes around every Christmas seasonal, and every I can, every Oklahoman knows that jingle from front to back. Yeah, yeah. and that's a, you know, we, we in Colorado, where I come from, we, we've got American furniture warehouse, which is so ingrained in every Coloradan's mind that South Park has talked about it. Yeah, so yeah, again, you know, Sonic Brain is nothing new. It's been around for hundreds of years. Back there. You're a receiver, not a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think you technically hit the guy in the middle there. So I think yeah, I mean, technically by the rules I said earlier, he now has to ask the question when you get hit. <laughs> Partial <laughs> deception. <laughs> so I have a question about how this applies to companies that are in the music and audio space. Our company makes software tools for music creatives. So we have a variety of products and they have distinctly different sounds from each other. So, and so my question is, as Coop Studios, do you have a sonic brand? If you do, do you find that it may set incorrect expectations or drive away the kind of customers that you might be trying to attract because they think you can only do X when you can do A through Z? My wife is going to be so vindicated that you just asked me that <laughs> because for years she has been saying, why does not Coop Studios have an audio logo? I'm like, oh gosh, how would we even begin? And that, yeah, I mean, that's the Dude, challenge. I mean, the cobbler doesn't get his kids' shoes for right. <laughs> I mean. um, but I, I think the the way we we need one, we need one. You need one. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know how we're going to approach that. I feel like it could rip our entire team apart. Um, it's it's going to be a challenging thing, but. Uh, but yeah, the cabbage kids with the Hoover and shoes. Yeah, it, it's an interesting challenge because we have we're primarily focused in the space of people who are creating soundtracks, film scores, and and uh, for people you know writing scores for video games, film, TV, and a lot of what you talked about in your presentation with the emotional hooks and all of that is it, it could have been straight out of you know what we what we learned at at film score in school uh, with how to get those emotional connections. And it's uh, the variety of, of music that can be made and, and genres and, and instrumental sounds and all the different things. It's very hard to pick something that represents this is our brand as music creators or as those who are making tools for music creators because we don't want people to just think, oh, they're just the orchestral guys or they're just the sound design guys or they're just the heavy guitar people or whatever it may be. Yeah. So. Is yeah, it? and I would imagine that those of you who run agencies, you got to struggle with that too. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, eat our own cooking here, right? That yeah, so yeah, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm still waiting to turn uh, Kenny Rogers the Gambler into my own personal little brand. Oh, so audio. I, I, I think that's the jam right there. Right. So personal audio logo. So one of our composers, Jake, came up with this idea. The other day, um, he I'm, and I'm just going to float this out there. I don't. I think this is the most brilliant idea that I've ever heard. But I don't know anything about social, so you you guys are going to tell me if this is as brilliant as I think it is. It's like, dude, what if we started creating audio logos for celebrities and posting them on social, like just just as as fun? And I'm like, dude. Well, I don't, I don't know know it's, it's being about. just as fun. Like, if that's going to be my personal brand audio, I'm just saying, I don't know if you looked at the clock, the timer's up. And you know what? You know, if you're going to go with this gambler theme, sometimes you got to know when to fold them. No you got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to walk away. And what fucking time to break. So I think everybody's ready to walk away. <laughs>
right? Well, thank y'all so much for sitting through. I know. Thank you guys.